So, welcome back again to the uh, farm where Bolton Ergon Society is on a, a nice sunny spring day. Just a slight chill in the air, but that sun's warming up nicely. Um, we just do a, a quick one. I'm coming to, to the end of my uh, big blades now. At least I think I am. I thought I had before, but I found some more stashed away somewhere else. So. Uh, I'll start off with um, one of the axes that I missed from the last review. Um, it's a cord, a cord, cord tied handle. It's got this uh, this coating on that uh, was like a bit anti-slip, really. I would say, and as you can see, nice sharp, sorry, nice sharp uh, axe. Holds well in the hand as did all the others, nicely balanced. This is the one, in actual fact, that I mentioned in a previous video that uh, brushed me elbow against it and uh, it sliced my elbow just by touching it. It is that sharp. I haven't got any paper with me and I doubt I'd be trying it because it's a little bit breezy. Um, but it will cut paper just like a, a knife would. Uh, it's nice strong steel, it's not uh, bendy or anything, so yes, I think if I was going camping that would be an axe with a decent cover on that I would take with me. Um, that's without an hard swing particularly. Um, I think probably I could split that One thing <laughs> you can't see that I can is that uh, I'm studying mud and water here because of course the farm's been drenched with all the rain of late. But, uh, yep, no problem at all. You chop the wood the right way. Does it look to have damaged the blade in any way? Nope. Can't feel any burr on there. Anything like that, so... Looking at it myself, I would say that'd be quite resilient, lightweight axe. And again, I don't know if those a particular unit size or not. So, and uh, you have a little uh, bit at the back which you can use for various things. Um, so, I'll leave that over. There. Next one. This one has been tested recently. Um, it's the Gerber. Gerber or Gerber? I say Gerber. I don't care how anybody else says it, that's how I say it. It's a nice little uh, sheath. Plenty of room for the, the blade to um, slide in. Really. Goes in nicely. That's, uh, Velcro strap comes round. There's a strap there to go through a belt, which is a bit on the tight side, but it would stop it from sliding about. And as you can see, it holds it really well. And even though it's a stitched uh, pouch, I'd feel quite safe the way that's held. Whereas some of the blades I've shown you, I would not feel safe at all. Uh, Like I said, this has been tested recently. Um, there were some overhanging branches in the back street that uh, a particular person wasn't um, tending or looking after, and they nearly dragged my roof rack off my car, so I decided to remove them all. And it took me a couple of minutes with this blade, lovely and sharp, nice and strong. Good rubbery grip type handle, whatever it's made of, it has a rubbery feel to it and yeah, it's well balanced. It feels, I would say, almost like a cookery. Uh, I'm not really a big Gerber fan, but I must admit, this appeals to me. The design, the way it's set up, uh, it's got a lovely saw blade on the back there that uh, I think can do the job. Um, Yeah. It's 
not made to just look look good. This one is actually offset teeth. So you can actually see, I don't know how many uh, teeth per inch it's set up at, but um, you can actually see it's nicely offset for uh, big wood book sawing. Like I said, the blade is nicely curved down to the front. Not so sure what the little hole is for. Um, there's a nut and bolt through the handle, so um, I would imagine if you wanted to modify or change the handle, you could do quite easily, but I'd be very satisfied with that design. And bear in mind that that fence is rattling about and this kept moving and all. I think that's um, <laughs> stuck in there now. That's what you get with wet wood. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm quite uh, quite pleased. I was quite pleased with what it did to the overhanging branches, which were by no means thin, you know, quite thick ones. So, um, put that down there. A couple of extras that um, I think I got either last year or the year before, can't remember when, but um, in the uh, machete style again. The uh, This one got me attention. It wasn't very expensive and it's come from China. Um, it's got uh, a saw blade on the back, but I know the saw blade is just slightly offset to that side, but the teeth are all in the same line. So when it comes to sewing, um, I think it'll have a bit of difficulty, but that's by the by. It seems to have some sort of um, rope cutter, strap cutter there. And then two levels of blade, very similar to, I suppose, the way a cookery would be, or something like that. But, um, again, um, it's got a nice, lovely wooden handle that has a lovely feel compared to some. And even though the metal does rise above the wood, it actually does give you a feel, a better feel of grip, like there's something in the middle there to stop it from sliding. Because this is rather top heavy. It's uh, quite th thick really at the top compared to the back end so for bush bushcraft and woodwork I think it'll be quite a good um, quite a good blade to uh, oops. and as you can see because of the uh, incline of the uh, the grind there that cut straight through that easily like it was butter uh, and straight into the top of that post um, so although it doesn't feel razor sharp certainly sharp enough to do a decent job it feels strong it doesn't oh, it flexes but it doesn't over flex um, so I would find that uh, it says it's by a company called Frost in the USA but it definitely has a uh, compact uh, blade because that would act, act as, a, as an axe as well um, not too bad and I think it's around the $40, $50 range like 25 30 quid something like that um, so yeah I think uh, I think uh, it's well worth uh, investing in here's another one it's a Chinese one it's, um, it's uh, quite well decorated actually that's probably why I went for it mostly. Uh, it's got one of these raw panels on, but I think I would probably change that for something a bit a bit more rubbery. Uh, the blade is razor sharp and it's got a nice a nice um, gra nice grind to it. It narrows very nicely. So that would cleave in, into wood for chopping around a campfire. It's front heavy again because it's it's got a very thick back, a couple of millimetres thick of steel there, so two or three, um, 
it's top heavy like the other one was so again um, for chopping wood branches um, around the campfire that sort of thing I think it's probably uh, a decent enough blade and again it's um, it's not in in the expensive range for it's actually a bad shot that but it did the job um, again I think has it got any makers of no no it's not done even say made in China on that actually it's a wallop of steel I mean, it's a nice feel to it um, and again like I say it was about uh, 20 quid something like that which is about what $40 um, around the camp again if you're working on a budget the quite a few of the things I've shown you um, I'd work very well it's canvas strap seems to fit it very well and there doesn't seem to be any chance of it coming through which is one up on one of two of those that I've shown you of recent it's got a nice big uh, belt loop there which is reinforced on the back half by what looks like a piece of uh, plastic or something or it could be you know, could be unconditioned leather I don't know but um, yeah so it's, uh, it hangs down your side nicely just around the leg easy to get hold of the handle's just right I think I'd change the handle actually but uh, take the rope off put something else on or put a better I don't like the way that's knotted but other than that you're getting a chunk of metal there that um, you make a good um, good chopping axe blade whatever you want to call it uh, camping one it's not too heavy to carry for long distances and I, don't know, I think uh, budding knife makers could probably cut that down and make something else out of it as well because there's a nice chunk of steel there I mean that's uh, my finger next to it yeah that's quite a, a piece of steel really so um, I think that me for walking off camera I think that uh, brings us nicely really to the end of um, the big knives um, budget knives um, I think the the last two the cheaper ones I got from AliExpress um, and for all those people that frown upon buying cheaper knives or foreign knives or blah 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 um, I don't go with that you buy what you can afford you buy what will be of use to you and sometimes buying a name isn't always buying the best thing for the job that you've got to do so I think possibly that um, this uh, custom snobbery that goes around I think you've got to avoid that and work within your limits and what's practical for you um, yes if I was rich I'd probably buy all the big name things if money was no object but money is an object uh, and um, I can't see they'll be buying very many knives this year uh, because things are that tight uh, if I buy any at all uh, <laughs> but um, yeah I think this uh, this snobbery um, and I don't I'm not talking about it like the rip-off merchants um, although I've seen some very good clones of knives that um, that as good as the real thing and in fact I was listening to a conversation that was going on recently at the shooting show uh, with a knife maker there and um, the guy was saying some of these big names especially some of the big American names that have the stuff done in Korea and China the Chinese make more than the orders that are put into them so if um, so for instance cold steel was to put in an order for a particular knife of 500, 5,000, 50,000 whatever the Chinese would double that and then sell them through their own outlets like AliExpress at half the price so you've not got a clone you've got the same same knife made of the same steel at the same same time but they're seeing an, another market for them to get around the license um, there are a lot of big companies that can't get licenses to stop the Chinese doing this. The Chinese veto anything that uh, 
tries to get a monopoly in their country, so so much to think about. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. Um, and uh, I am hoping soon that I might be able to review a couple of her rifles, the possibly the Avanix, uh, I think it's the Rainstorm and the Cleaver Cricket, but um, that's a little bit up in the air at the moment. Uh, one big bit of news that I did see recently was that um, Diana, who own apparently um, a number of uh, companies over here, Daystate being one of them, have bought out Brocock, which I think is a crying shame. It's one of the last few small British companies that was making decent guns. And uh, I had one of them for a while and I only had to sell it to uh, preserve the vehicle that I've got. Otherwise I wouldn't have done. And uh, I think the person who's going to be taking over seeing to the running and so-called improvements to the company, who comes from another bit, uh, British company, I, I don't think I don't think I'll do Brocock any good to me. But I, I'd like to be proven wrong. I don't think I will be. So um, anyway. Thanks for now and uh, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to thumbs up. Um, it makes a big difference to a lot of the people who put a lot of hard work into it. I know I harp on about it, but people pop in, you know, see 119 views and five thumbs, which I think is quite pathetic, really. Um, show the guy that you appreciate what he's done. Show the guy that you're supporting him, that you're there. He can't tell who's viewed. It could be Tom, Dick or Harry. Put a thumb up. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Uh, until the next video. Uh, I think I'll probably upset the sun that's coming. Um, I'll see you again soon.